Hey, via telephone, it is uh, Pat McGeehan, who is our guest here in this first segment. Pat is the uh, House of uh, Delegates District 1 representative. Good morning, Pat. How are you, sir? Good morning. Good to be back with you, Rob. The pleasure is all mine, Patrick. We haven't had you on this session, and I always enjoy our conversations. Sure. You went front and center in uh, expressing your concerns about the form energy deal that's basically in your uh, backyard, as uh, that borders your territory there, Pat. And since you have done that, I've talked to a few other folks who seem to be expressing similar concerns. Uh, Can you summarize what the scenario is there with Form Energy and what your concerns are? Um, sure. I think to start off with, it's a, a non traditional startup, and usually the state government doesn't get involved with with these kinds of venture projects and startups just because of the risk involved. Um, we're not really sure if this uh, form energy really even has a, a, a viable product to market yet because they haven't openly demonstrated that their iron air battery will do what they claim it will do. Um, and, you know, these people with form energy are not exactly orthodox business people. Um, They're more like ideologues devoted to some sort of crusade, Um, and by their own words, uh, in a white paper that Forum Energy authored uh, recently, I think it was last year, I read the whole thing, and right up front in the executive summary, the mission for them is to totally eliminate the fossil fuel industry, which, uh, you know, seems on the face of it to be you know, a little bit antithetical towards uh, the values that uh, we as West Virginians hold. Um, And so, you know, they're also financially backed by some, let's say, very questionable foreign investors, uh, some of which with known ties to the Chinese Communist Party. Um, And these foreign regimes, you know, they have an obvious incentive to undermine the stability of American energy independence. And this is not just with, like, form energy, but uh, ever since the Build Back Better uh, plan was passed with the Biden administration um, over the summer, there's about almost $500 billion of direct subsidy payments to various green energy initiatives um, uh, throughout the country. And so you have all these federal subsidies that are propping up these these different n- new enterprises, like, say, Forum Energy will be receiving all sorts of federal subsidies every year. And so all of a sudden that attracted a lot of private capital um, from you know, different venture groups that are um, really trying to take advantage of uh, of the the, the climate. Uh, uh, they call it climate justice. The white paper from Form Energy is actually entitled "Solving the Climate Justice Puzzle," and uh, and so you know, right there, you can get a sense that from an ideological perspective, uh, you know. The ends always justify the means. And so that's a concern. You know, we're not talking about new core steel, which is a great deal. They're a traditional steel company that's been around forever. They're headquartered in North Carolina, and they want to expand. They want to look at West Virginia. That's great. Um, and so this is very different, though. You know, and this is not only high risk, but, um, you know, I mean, there's so many different things that could happen. You know, that's valuable property uh, along the Ohio River, 55 acres um, with uh, barge and rail access that uh, we could easily um, market and receive some sort of traditional company um, in heavy industry that could use that. But we go and we uh, um, award hundreds of millions of dollars of uh, taxpayer money uh, to these guys who are unproven and seemingly hate our way of life, um, you know, I think that's 
probably a bad call and you know i'll just be uh, sort of straightforward you know with through my just research um with all the sort of foreign investor money involved uh there's definitely um uh, circumstantial links to uh, some of these uh, PE and VC funds that are financially backing foreign energy that have known ties to the Chinese Communist Party. And so, you know, it's a question of, you know, it used to be in this country that uh, it went without saying that you really didn't want literal communists setting up in your backyard. Uh, but today, I guess that's just a contentious idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, um, but, you know, it just goes beyond that. You know, there's a, uh, I finally got my hands on a report from uh, WVU's Business College by John Deskins, which was uh, very hard to get a hold of, and it painted a rosy picture. And I've got testimony from uh, one or two guys that sit on the Economic Development Authority board that eventually voted to award 70-some million dollars to uh, the Department of Economic Development to give to Form Energy uh, in December. That was the initial round. Um, and uh, they did their own analysis and said this is a terrible deal. These guys on the, on the board of the EDA have a, one guy has a background in investment banking. Another is a financial wealth advisor. They know what they're talking about. They did a whole lot of analysis. They took even at face value what Form Energy was telling them, and it still showed that the state would uh, be upside down by so many years into it by hundreds of millions of dollars. They said it was the probably the worst deal um, that's come across their desk. Well, I'm told in reaction to that, uh, this sudden report uh, with John Deskin's name on it, who's the economist at WVU that typically the state government always goes to for, you know, i got a program, could you analyze this and give us a report? And he's always happy to oblige. And so he comes out with a report within 24 hours after this analysis from the EDA is submitted saying this is a bad deal. That report from Deskin's at WVU was disseminated to the board members on the EDA the night before the vote to award or not award $70-some million back in December to uh, Form Energy. Um, And uh, 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 there was no discussion allowed, but that report, um, that that report is very egregious. The most egregious facet of this WVU report are the initial inputs used for total direct employee compensation, which pretty well drives the rest of the report's sort of rosy and glowing conclusions. Uh, So, for instance, by the year 2029, which is when this report claims that Form Energy will be at full capacity with the 750 jobs they are promising, These are blue-collar factory jobs, by the way. The report states that the total amount of annual payroll for these promised 750 jobs will be over $450 million. So just do the math. That would amount to an average salary of over $600,000 a year per job. And remember, these are factory jobs. And so what's even more bizarre, though, if you look at that report, is that in the year 2025, which is the first year analyzed by this uh, WVU Business College Deskins report, there will supposedly be, uh, let's see, 178 jobs created by Form Energy, with a total compensation for its employees of somewhere north of $30 million. So do the math on that. That roughly amounts to a little under $200,000 of annual pay per job. So this this is confounding to me because anyone ought to know that if you're starting out a new enterprise at a new location, your payroll expenses are typically going to be front loaded. You know, so in in other words, you, you you know you're going to be needing to hire leaders and managers and engineers and personnel that are typically more expensive. And then once you continue to hire entry-level positions later on and down the line, the average salary and wage per job begins to go down uh, once you reach full capacity at these promised 750 jobs. 
But this report actually states the reverse. This report claims that by the time this company reached full production with their promised 750 jobs, the average compensation per job actually goes up by over 300%. You know, you know, so you're adding in all these entry level positions, you know, janitors, you know, whatever. That usually average has to go drastically down. So, you know, something's just not right. Either this is just simply gross negligence or someone may be intentionally presenting information in a way that's just very misleading. And just let's remember, okay, this report was used to counter the analysis by some board members on the Economic Development Authority and ultimately persuade a majority of the board members from the Economic Development Authority to vote to award this so-called form energy startup company with roughly 70 million tax dollars from the state's public treasury. So, so this is really no small matter, you know. And I think the author of this report, John Deskins from WU, may may recognize the gravity of this because if you look at that report, the very second sentence of the entire report—it's not a footnote—it reads that the information. The data used to start this report off was provided by the Economic Development Office, and it was not independently audited by the authors of this report. So, so again, if, if this was some sort of gross mistake, it's, it's gross negligence and maladministration by the authorities responsible for giving them this data and telling them to generate this report off of it. Pat, hey, uh, hey, if hey. it was deliberate, it could be much worse than that. But but if it was a big mistake, it's a huge one and very obvious at that. So it's been almost two months since this report was produced. So so why hasn't anyone just bothered to correct it then? That's just my question. Well, I know we have some questions for you here. And to put the money into perspective, the state's expected to kick in $290 million. They've already done 75 of that. And Form Energy is expected to spend $350 million of its own money according to the story on the Metro News site today. Bill? Yeah, good morning, Delegate. Uh, a couple of points. Sure. Uh, Mike Carmichael, uh, Mitch, Mitch. Car- Mitch, Mitch. Car- I said Mike, Mitch Carmichael uh, is supportive of this, and he was saying that the sure. uh, 750 workers with an annual salary of 63000 uh may be sure. blue collar, but it's nice collar, uh, nice salary. Sure. Uh, let me ask a basic question, and I'm trying to understand but, what But that's do. not what the report says that they had generated. Okay. Right. Let, let, let that, me, that's that's the point. Okay. Let me go to a basic question. What do they do? And uh, the uh, as I read it, it's battery technology which works through a reversible rusting process. The battery breathes sure. in oxygen from the air, converts iron metal to rust. When the battery charges, the reverse happens. An electric current mm-hmm. converts the rust back to iron, and the battery breathes out oxygen. Yeah, How, this is old technology. Yeah, it's just rusting iron yeah. and unrusting iron. Yeah, that's the yep. that's the impression I have as well. So what's right. what's new about this? What's the uh, new technology? Is there well, any? Well, I mean, there, it, it, it it's it was it was tried like thirty years ago, and just you know didn't seem obvious. It doesn't seem like Elon Musk is interested in this. Uh, he's going different routes. Uh, these guys claim to be able to produce this special iron air battery, um, and their sole goal was basically to get uh, some of the more blue states that are adopting this this lunacy about you know everything. The entire grid is going to be powered by solar and wind. And then they store, you know, the power in these new magic batteries. Um, um, so, you know, when it's not sunny or when it's not the wind's not blowing, you know, they have this extra capacity to release into the grid. Problem is, California already tried this. I read an article in MIT Review that said California repurposed four different uh, power plants to be battery plants at the tune of like over $20 billion. And at the end of the day, when they release the energy from these different battery plants into the grid, 
it represents something on the order of 0.0004% of the total electricity in California's energy grid. So, I mean, it's just not there. Um, I'm, I'm sure there could be other applications if they were successful for such a battery, but, you know, it, 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 there's a lot of, uh, uh, of skepticism that should be had about this because they refuse to release the technology and demonstrate that it actually works and they haven't mastered it. I mean, I've found plenty of uh, YouTube clips with the CEO of Form Energy doing interviews on these uh, climate change um, forums. And he's he's saying, I found one from last year where he asserts that, well, it could be 10 years before we figure out this technology, but, you know, it's worth it, you know, in the end, because we really need to, to, to essentially save the earth or something like that. Yeah. So, again, these are not traditional businessmen. These are, these are ideologues, and they're getting all these federal subsidies, and they have no skin in the game. Yeah, Pat, you know? Pat obviously you, have, uh, you do not support the project. Uh, but, again, let me go back to Mitch Carmichael, someone that has proven sure. himself over and over again of being knowledgeable and a straight shooter. Have you talked to Mitch about this? Yeah, I did. I talked to him okay. uh, in the hallway 45 minutes ago. So evidently, uh, uh, he has not convinced you this is the way to go. Well, I mean, he he's, he offered to have a sit down, you know, and I'm fine with that, you know. But uh, 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 you know, look, I, I'm gonna I'm not going to I'm not gonna challenge him. You said he was knowledgeable and an expert and has done a great job. I, we got to go review the track record here. Okay, we had Hyperloop. What happened there? Where's that at? Then we had the Magic Bullet Factory in Kanawha County. Where's that at? Then we had the China Energy deal. Remember that? $80 billion. Where's that at? You know, the list just keeps going on. So to just sit there and say that, oh, yeah, these guys have a great track record. They know what they're doing. Um, I, I, I disagree with that. I think they have a bad track record. So, Pat, this is John Gilstrap. Where does this stand now? Uh, is the $70 million already spent and there's another 230, I forget what the number is, that's being proposed? Where does it stand? Is, is this a done deal? Is it... Uh, well, the, the high-impact money from the EDA that was granted, the $70 million, is went to purchase the property for the state and build some hard assets that Form Energy wants. Uh, my understanding is it's mostly infrastructure, which is fine. Um, I think we should at least uh, keep the land, never give up the land. I don't care, you know, because the the 750 jobs, I mean, that's not really defined. You know, how long uh, do you have to carry a job? Where's it got to be? You know, the, does it have to be from West Virginia? Could it be somebody in Massachusetts? You know, I mean, it's very easy for these guys. And by the way, you know, there's a reason why lawyers and executives uh, go to the private sector, because normally those are the guys that finish first in business school. Okay. The guys in government, typically, you know, you ever heard of a good good enough for government work those are the guys typically that finish last in business school okay so they're able to run circles around the guys that we have so i mean trying to claim that uh some of our guys are experts on this and have a great track record uh i think they also have uh, uh a reluctance to say no to anything uh and uh, uh and they probably don't have the expertise to even figure out uh some of the ins and outs on this so if you were to boil down your objections and we've heard a number of them and for quite i find i find your your arguments pretty compelling having not done a lot of independent research into this thing sure what is the most compelling argument against the program is it the economics of it is the politics of it the the stated goals of it what is the the primary thing that you object to well i mean i think the primary thing i object to is that uh 
we could be squandering a valuable piece of real estate that um, could better serve the common good if we're just a little bit patient. You know, we we just we we dismantled the blast furnace that sat on that land just a couple of years ago. It's getting cleared off, um, and there's going to be plenty of. It's always it's always well if we don't do this, they're going to go somewhere else. Okay, well who cares? They're obviously desperate, you know, to get this money. Okay, I don't think they really have anywhere else to go because I've talked to other different sources and they say, yeah, we don't want to touch those guys, you know. And if you look in their backgrounds, uh, it's not like it. It's not evident to me that their leadership team um, uh, are have the desire to stick around and manage 750 employees in Weirton, West Virginia, in the long haul, nor do they, I think they actually have the capacity. A couple of them might have some fine white lab coats, these executives, but, you know, I mean, as soon as it's profitable to sell out and liquidate and get the heck out of Dodge, that's what they'll do. And that's what, you know, these more globalist-aligned corporations do. They don't have any attachment to community, to the, to the, you know, as Aristotle and Plato would call it, the polis, right? And so they come in and they have, you know, vastly different corporate values. Uh, they have all these federal subsidies. They really don't make a live up to federal subsidies and make the payments to the EDA just with that for the next several years. And so who knows what they will do, but they don't, they're not my kind of people. All right. And I, and it takes a long time to, um, to, to create, uh, a coherent culture that really gives a lot of stability to the local community and develops fellowship between our fellow men in, in the polis, you know, in the, in the town or in the city state. And, uh, it takes a very short amount of time to destroy all of that. Pat, on that That's note, I, I got ju- to gotta jump in because we're just about out of time. Uh, sure. 30 seconds. Where does this sit with the legislature right now? Are there any other votes on it coming up? Well, I think we're, we've delayed it. I gave a big presentation in caucus this morning uh, laying out all the different arguments against why this is uh, probably not a good fit for West Virginia. It's also a question of why West Virginia, by the way. You know, they uh, they could probably choose any other number of uh, con- uh, states to set this up, which would be the more much more friendly to their ideology. But um, so, you know, we'll see. I mean, I think it's delayed right now. It's in a holding pattern, and uh, there's going to have to be some questions asked Pat, and answered. Thank you very so. much for your time this morning. As always, greatly right. appreciated.